Good morning, everyone. I want to start by addressing the situation that's unfolding south of the border, which is also having an impact here at home. For far too many Canadians, the images and stories coming out of the U.S. are all too familiar. As a country, we can't pretend that racism doesn't exist here. Anti-black racism is real. Unconscious bias is real. And systemic discrimination is real. And they happen here in Canada. Over the weekend, we saw thousands of people gather across the country to join peaceful protests against anti-black racism. By standing together, and denouncing the few who would try to derail these demonstrations, Canadians are sending the message that they will never tolerate injustice. To young black Canadians, I hear you when you say you are anxious and angry, when you say that this brings back painful experiences of racism that you've faced. I want you to know that I'm listening and that your government will always stand with you. Together, we will keep taking meaningful action to fight racism and discrimination in every form. The status quo, where people face violence because of the color of their skin, is unacceptable. No parent should have to once again explain to their kids that they or their friends might face racism. It is time, it is past time, for this to change. As leaders and allies, we must do the hard work needed to listen and learn. We must ensure that everyone is safe and respected. That includes journalists who need to be able to do their work on the front lines to expo expose the truth and tell the stories we need to hear. And we must, as Canadians, always keep working together to build a fairer, better, more equitable country for all. For many Canadians, what happens on the other side of the border at moment, these are familiar scenes. The racism against the Noirs, the systemic racism against the Noirs, the discrimination, the injustice, they exist also in us. En fin de semaine, on a vu des milliers de personnes partout au pays manifester pacifiquement pour se dresser contre le racisme, en faisant front commun et en dénonçant ceux qui essaient, comme toujours, de perturber ces manifestations. Les Canadiens envoient le message qu'ils ne toléreront pas l'injustice. Je veux donc m'adresser aux jeunes Canadiens noirs. Je vous entends. J'entends vos inquiétudes, votre colère, votre peine. Je vous entends lorsque vous dites que ça vous rappelle des expériences douloureuses de racisme et de discrimination. Je vous écoute et notre gouvernement est là pour vous. Et on agit pour combattre le racisme et la haine sous toutes ses formes. Le statu quo où les jeunes font face à la violence à cause de la couleur de leur peau est inacceptable. Aucun parent ne devrait avoir à expliquer à nouveau à leurs enfants que ou leurs amis pourraient subir le racisme. En tant que dirigeants et alliés, on doit veiller à ce que tout le monde soit en sécurité et traité avec respect. Ça inclut, bien sûr, les journalistes qui doivent pouvoir faire leur travail sur le terrain pour exposer la vérité et raconter les histoires qu'on doit entendre. Et en tant que Canadiens, on doit continuer de bâtir un pays meilleur et plus égal pour tous. It has been a very difficult spring for many people. And although the path forward won't be easy, things will get better. Over the last month, we've started to see promising signs that the curve is flattening in Canada. Now, the situation remains very serious, but the more we can control the spread of the virus, the more we can begin restarting. In many parts of the country, this is already happening. In others, where the situation remains more uncertain, steps are being taken more slowly. Every province and territory will have its own approach. But as we move forward with restarting the economy, we must keep working together. 
On Thursday, as part of our weekly call, I spoke to the Premiers about collaboration on the path ahead. I'm working closely with them, just like with mayors and other leaders, on what this approach should include, because there are a whole range of issues that will require us to take action together. As I've said before, to keep Canadians safe, to give businesses the confidence to reopen their doors and people the confidence to walk through those doors, we need to cooperate on countrywide testing and contact tracing. And on this front, we're making good progress. At the same time, our government is ready to be a partner for the provinces and territories in supporting vulnerable people, securing personal protective equipment, and working on childcare, to name a few. In other words, we're ready to be a partner in a safe, effective restart of the economy. And today, we're demonstrating a first step forward with support for municipalities as they face a cash crunch. From testing clinics to programs for seniors, cities and towns provide essential services. So it's crucial that they have the resources they need. In response to COVID-19, we will make available $2.2 billion for municipalities in the coming weeks through their yearly federal support with the gas tax fund. Normally, municipalities receive these payments in two installments, but we know that cities and towns need this money right away as they deal with COVID-19. That's why we're making the full 2020-21 payment available now. Minister McKenna has sent letters to all of her provincial and territorial counterparts to outline how this accelerated process will work. But here's the bottom line. This is strong support to keep Canadians safe and our communities strong. And it's support that will give businesses the confidence to reopen, getting, uh, getting hardworking Canadians back on the job. This is a start. We know there's more to be done to support municipalities and to support the entire reopening process. In the days and weeks to come, we'll keep working with the provinces and territories on this and on a whole range of other measures. Plus que jamais, il va falloir travailler ensemble pour relancer l'économie. Notre gouvernement va donc continuer de collaborer avec ses partenaires pour surmonter la crise, notamment en ce qui concerne la recherche des contacts et le dépistage. On est aussi prêt à aider les provinces et les territoires à protéger les personnes vulnérables, à obtenir plus d'équipements de protection individuelle et à se pencher sur des enjeux comme les services de garde. On est prêt à travailler ensemble pour assurer la relance en toute sécurité. C'est pourquoi, aujourd'hui, nous faisons un premier pas vers l'avant en accordant du soutien aux municipalités qui ont des problèmes de liquidité. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce qu'on va accorder 2,2 milliards de dollars aux municipalités au cours des prochaines semaines par l'entremise du financement fédéral annuel. Habituellement, les municipalités reçoivent ces paiements en deux versements, mais c'est de l'argent dont elles ont besoin maintenant pour pouvoir continuer à offrir des services essentiels. Nous allons donc effectuer un seul paiement pour 2020-2021 dès maintenant. La ministre McKenna a envoyé ses lettres, des lettres à ses homologues des provinces et des territoires pour expliquer le processus accéléré. Et voici ce qu'il faut retenir. On réalise cet investissement pour permettre aux municipalités de continuer d'assurer la sécurité des Canadiens. On appuie des services qui vont aider les entreprises à rouvrir et les gens à commencer à retourner travailler. Et on examine aussi d'autres façons de soutenir le travail vital que font les villes et les municipalités à travers le pays. Il reste encore beaucoup à accomplir pour que nos communautés reprennent leurs activités, que nos entreprises rouvrent leurs portes et que les gens retournent au travail. Mais je sais qu'ensemble, on va y arriver.